Welcome to my lab, my no rules lab. So what do this mean? It means that uh, I, once in a while I like to do programming. We are worrying about too much about the rules and the proper things and experiment stuff, you know. However, you are more than welcome to leave comments, you know, things that you agree, you disagree, you say, well, I wouldn't do this normally in real life for these issues, etc. It's fine. I, I really appreciate that kind of feedback. Sometimes you discover new things, you know, and I always welcome new knowledge, you know, and also different point of views, you know, it's something valuable. So let me explain what you have here. Um, long time ago, uh, when I was young, I used to play role game. I used to play role game the first two weeks of the month. And that way I will save money with my friends and then we will go out the last two weeks. And the reason we will do that is because in that time people will basically get paid in the first time of the month. And we knew that after paying the bills, you know, and having fun and going out, etc., uh, many guys will not have money. And normally since in Argentina, girls used to go in for free or very cheap. Uh, we knew that the last two weeks of the month will be literally fill up. So we were <laughs> we were saving the money in that way. Instead of drinking a, a beer, we would drink a champagne, you know. Uh, however, as a big nerd, you know, or geek, a nerd with social skills, I pretty much continue playing with my game, with my friends, you know. It's, I think it's something that I like, you know, is a... Con I like to use my imagination and all that. Anyways, so while I'm playing role game with my friends, and as you, as some of you may know, role games take turns. You know, as I'm waiting for my turn and listen to the actions of everybody else, I like to do programming at the same time. You know, I like to just sit down and just eh, let my my brain wandering. And what you see right here is a system that I was building. You know, that is a combination of two systems. One is the D6 system of Star Wars, you know, first and second edition, if I am not wrong, uh, which I really like because it's allow you to do heroic things pretty much in the game. And also because you only need one, dis one uh, dice of six sizes instead of the other ones that normally you need like uh, 20 sizes, eight sizes and all that. And another system that I find out out there that was very interesting that is based on Star Trek that uses normally the 100 dices, you know, or 2 of 10, you know, in order to make like, you know, it 100. And I was like, well, I would like to be able to combine both of them together with the concept that you should be able to build your skills based on how much you use them. Not so much about how you decide to distribute your points. So I, I am still working on the on the mechanics, you know, how you can grab something that I can tell you, well, put uh, 23 points in these skills, that would be like 23%. However, transform this into the probability of throwing dices or six size, si sizes, as you can see there with it, the 3D plus one plus zero, etc. If this is a work in progress, like I say, I haven't saw it in a while. But anyways, now let me show you the, the weird things that I have done. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is basically an express server. It's pretty common use in Konshama and Node.js. Uh, when, for example, you do microservices and you want to provide an API or also to basically show a website. Uh, this one does the, the both. You can see right here the website that's inside the public folder. And then you have a Konshama, some entry points that I did in order to obtain a GSON. And you will, you will, I will get there. Uh, I basically grab and after I set up the, the router with Express, I pretty much say, say hey, you're going to be working with GSON, just an FYI. Uh, this code right here is in order to open a path to the public folder. So in that way, when it's loading, you know, is, is, is what you actually see here in the dashboard, you see? So right there in the index page. And as you see, it's a very small say, page and I will, I, will go, I will go deeper in there. 
So let's go back to the meet. Now, um, from here is that I'm setting uh, everything related with the router. Okay, not only I'm setting up uh, where you can access, but also the actions that is going to happen. And here's where I start doing weird things. So for example, here in the router load data, let's take a look at it. And uh, basically what I do is I get the file system, you know, something that is going to allow me to work with the file system. I create a path, you know, where basically I'm storing the data. Right now I should have characters. That's what I'm focused on. But in this folder, you are going to have weapons, JSON, you know, in, in vehicles, you, you name it. I mean, and the idea is that I'm going to read every single one of these files and I want their contents to be available through all my application. And that's what I'm hijacking both the request object that is created by Express and also the respond object that normally is used to, you know, to execute the response to the user. So I am hijacking them. And, I, and the way that I'm doing the hijacking is I get the content of the, of the file plus just the name before the period. So that way I only have to worry about the format of the file name. Okay, here's the data, uh, which I basically parse as a JSON. And then pretty much what I do is I set up a, a getter and a setter, basically a variable right there. Consuma uh, by defining in the request the property with a key and basically get and set the, the, the data. And I say, you know what, move on with a regular process. Then it goes to the save, where what I want to do here is that since it's a respond, I want to have an extra function to be able to save the changes that I do to whatever object I have loaded, in, you know, into the data folder. So it's pretty much the same. I get a file system, something to work with the file system. I read them synchronically, one after another. And then for each of them, you know, I create the file name you know, where I'm going to be writing the information. And then I go to the router and say, you know what, uh, based on this key, okay, which is going to be right here, I want to create this object that have a save function, you know, save method, I'm sorry, correctness, you know, and basically I'm going to write the content, okay, of the data as in a string, you know, and, they, and then after I finish with that, I want to save it in the response. Uh, I want to save it right there based on the key. In that way, it's available. Uh, and then move to the next. Now, one thing that I'm doing here in order to do testing that I will show you soon is the router Swagger. It, it, in Swagger, what it's going to allow you to do if you set it up correctly is that it's provide you an interface to do testing. So I think that I'm going to do that right now to show you how it how it goes it's not fully implemented okay but i think that you will like it's going to help you to get the picture so you have this interface to test your 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 uh, api pretty much and also to provide a person that may use this api an idea how to use it uh, it's very common to use this in microservices uh, to create an entry point where you can test, you know, internally, you know, this. And also, sometimes you add a health entry point, which in this case, we don't need it because this is not a microservice itself. So, for example, here, I can try it out how to get all the characters that I have stored so far. New character right there. Th this new character that you see here, the zero one, this is my template. So my idea is to basically create one or more templates. But right now, I'm just saying, you know what? Let's go to a simple template. Everybody has six, you know, as the base, you know. And then these are new ones right there, starting for the first one, you know, and such. And then the other thing that I created right here, just so someone, so the person could basically test, is to say, you know what? I want to find a specific one. So let's say that I go with the last one. Okay, and uh, here, here we go again. That's the name, you know. But let's say that I want to change them. You know, I want to change this because I think, and eh, I don't like it too much. Blah blah blah. So I, I will go basically in here, okay, and I will provide the ID, 
Okay, and here say Alexander the Great. For those of you who don't know, checking history. Okay, and right there, I I, I get in the, the the feedback, and when I go in here, oops, wrong place. When I go in here and I search again for the for the for this one for the number three and execute, I can see that it has changed it. Okay, and that's exactly where it's inside the file in here. If I click in here, I'm going to go and try to open it. And if we basically search, we're going to find out that right here is Alexander the Great. Okay, now let's move on. And so the swagger is very straightforward. You know, you are basically going in here. You are you are setting the configuration. You say, well, I require Swagger. These are going to be the entry point. You got the server that's going to react to these entry points. You know, and this is basically the entry point, the document itself. And then here's the definition that I put it into this file. Okay, where basically it's all the graphics that you see. And also there had to be another one right here. There you go. Which is the configuration JSON that you basically say, you know what, I want you to search, you know, all the, J the files ending in GS and GS inside the source, inside all the subfolders, you know, etc. Either way, and this is pretty much a standard, and there's more than one way to set up, and this is not what I'm going to go over. And then finally, in this ex in this part of experiment, I uh, go in here and say, you know what, the rotor, let's set up the entry point for the characters, you know, to do the actions. And here is basically the file. Once again, remember, this is just experiment. There's no rules and should split around. I know that there are things that could be done better, and I more than welcome you to leave it in the comment. So... In here, as you see, I had a router of Express, and I say, you know what, when someone check the characters, just return a 200, which is this is, 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 is right there in this part, and just return all the characters, you know, so you can print it. I also provide a count, which I'm going to use later. You know, I, I going to add it to the swagger. Normally, this is a good idea because that way the person knows how much character there exists in the system and they don't try to update, you know, or do something that is not in the range. You know, uh, here the update. Again, I'm sure that there's more than one way to do that. Uh, what I'm doing in here is I'm checking if the body and the body that I uh, and the property of the body ID exist. If either of this is kind of like undefined or no or whatever, this is pretty much going to continue and it's going to print the, print this with the body and and all that. And this is something that I'm going to remove later. Uh, and I require I return a bad request, you know, and that way you know that you did something wrong there. Then I check if it's in range. Okay, this is a function that I created. Uh, since I don't want you to, it's explicit. You go exclusive. Um, of both ends so you, i want to check that you are not zero since that's my template and also i don't want to i want to check that you're not trying to use an id that's beyond the number of characters that exist already and right here you may wonder what the heck is that plus there and that's a very old trick you know in javascript uh, that is kind of like that that allows me to parse the string into a number and that's exactly what is that doing that and now here i am saying hey are the key valid so what happened is even though that in the future i would like to provide functionality that basically say i want you to add extra properties because maybe a user in the game say let's say that in the game the character made an action okay and you know, in action to the point that you say, you know what, that should be in a skill. You manage to specialize in us something that you never tried before. And I think that instead to use the regular properties like a string, dexterity, you know, dexterity, endurance, etc. I think that we should make it your own skill, you know. But in the meanwhile, as I haven't done that, implemented that yet. Right now, what I want to check is that the, the, at least the keys you know, are valid of the information that you're sending me. And I do that by comparing the template versus what you're sending me. 
you know if there's a mismatch i will let you know you know and i will have a, an error right here to know you know and if everything goes fine i pretty much save it into the request of express you know uh, as you can see here and make sure that i am just updating the characters you know based on the id and then in here in the respond is where i'm using the function in order to save that information into the file you know so request is kind of like a loader and respond is kind of like a saver you know uh, that's what i put them into there again this experiment i know that's not wrong you go this is wrong blah 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 and i say okay and i send it back you know as for a way of confirmation uh, here in create this is what basically allows me to add a new character you know so you should create it first and then you should update it and what i basically do is i go to my template and i basically using this object assign i just created a clone okay it's going to clone everything or in theory should clone you know and then what i'm saying is you know what the idea of this is going to be the consumer the size of the array i'm going to provide a new character there i'm going to push it to the to the array to, to the array that exists in the request you know so in that way it's available everywhere else and i'm going to save it you know in here so right there basically everything has been updated and then i send a code saying yes i just created this and this is the call the information of what i created as a json and now we go into these pieces and this is something that i haven't write the swagger yet uh, because you know it's, it's work you know that is pretty much i have created a way that you're going to be able to access to every single section because there's a lot of information that, that goes into that JSON that I show you there like you have a an about section you have an attribute skills you know a, into the skills you have a string the, you know for every single one you know you have a different category that's what i say that you can specialize on something so if there is something in here in the string that you have made you know repeatedly you know instead of making you throw a string they're going to let you make you throw something in here that's more specialized and give you more chances you know so you have all kind of skills based on the different attributes and then you know you have like lock and etc so I want to be able to access to them. So let, let's do that so I can show you how I do it. You know, I'm going to go in here. And the first thing I got uh, here, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load everything. So it's the characters. So I go here, I say character, and I say, give me the first one. So right there, you see that I have everything in there. And now let's say that I just want the about, because maybe I just want to see just something specific of the user you see what i'm saying i don't want to see everything so here i do about and voila so right there i can start changing like skills uh, maybe inside the skills i just want to uh, check the string right there is the string you see uh, so so that's that's pretty much what i what i try to do you know here's the about here's the property you know attributes you know and and this allow you to basically break it down little by little and and the way that you access it is very straightforward check it check this out uh, in here for example let me move this so it's easier to to read even though i should break it down maybe i should just i want to take the job to break this down like this by the way, semicolons are optional in these days. Normally I try to use them, but in this case I wasn't, in case that someone of you were wondering. So basically I grab and I return the request based on the character, you know, in the array using the ID to find out what is the character. And then I go right there straight and say, you know, give me the attribute and give me this specific attribute. So it's, you know, here, for example, the same, you know, skills, using the skills. So so it's very straightforward you know and the only thing i need to make sure is that the person is actually passing the right parameter you know in order to be able to do the retrieving right there and and now let's go to the in range 
you know and the key I th that's the only part that is missing here so the first thing I do is to check if you're actually passing me a number you know instead of a string it's a nice way to do a checking you know and just I check the range right there you know um, so you, you are bigger than the maximum and you're smaller than you go you're bigger than the minimum and uh, and constant smaller than the maximum exclusive as you notice I don't use the equal there and here is how I validate the keys you know and I try to make it as simple as possible before I was doing like a loop and no killing but sometimes you have to you know go for the basics so what I do is that based on the target you know also based on the target and versus the template you know I get their keys and I just compare the keys in that level okay if there's any discrepancies in the strings I should return false then I go for every single key okay based on the source and I check if it's an object if it's an object what it tells me is that either it's an object or it's an array sometimes you can you can be one or the other and that's going to basically pass and then I, I do recursive as a recursion I go back and I say well now give me the information that is inside that object you know based on that key you know and and what I do is that I do an N so the moment that this is false this turns false and that's what I want to basically return and that's that's that section right there uh, of my experiments which is still ongoing so now let me let me show you this page that I was building you know etc you may notice that I am putting these different sections but there's nothing in the main and that's because I am working I am using this right here you know in, in order to do that and as you notice there is an ID here because I decided to I, I as part of the experiments you know I am trying to also do a section like this one where I go in here and I say oops uh, ah it's duh my, my bad and uh, to do, 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 do. Uh, characters there you go you see so I am building I am starting to build sections like that I don't know why it's, yeah yeah I don't I don't want that thank you you know and I go here and I say give me the attributes you see so so I am bringing it down and, and like I say this is all experiments so if I go here to the characters you know and to the attribute well, I, am, I am basically building it one page at a time you know uh, as you can see it's it very it seems to be weird but it's not that much what I'm doing is I am getting the container you know and then I grab in the JSON that I obtain it from here and I am sliding them so it kind of like an array you know and I basically I, I, I it's, it's very straightforward really I created a, a div you know where I basically provide the ID you know and then I pass it to the container you know and and I just write in the things in this way you know full role title you know etc and it's based on this what you see in here is the class because at the same time I mean I could have used something like I don't know bootstrap or something like that but I wanted to do it just as straightforward you know uh, as possible you know without giving them very very much overhead because I don't need it to be fancy I needed to basically work you know so I basically created you know the JSON in here and also I do other testing you see I, I have some other libraries that I'm still working on it uh, and here in sheet oh, come on and sheets you know same thing I'm still doing some experiments in here uh, right here for example in this part I am I am I am creating what is called a web custom object you go web custom is something that is already incorporating most of the browsers where you basically create a class and then you define it so in that way you can pretty much use this uh, tag like the any other HTML tag and I it's no part of this to go over it and also this is like poor examples about how to use it but either way I use the fetch you know to get a count 
you know, and then based on the can, based on the URL, the parameters, blah blah blah. You know, I I I do fetching of other characters that are in, in there, you know, and such. And here, you can basically see how I have, I am basically using, you know, to build what you have already saw in there. You know, and like I said, this is a complete experiment. I play with things, you know, and I haven't touched this in a long time. And here, I hear I, I, there's other experiments that I do as I play around, you know, trying different ways where basically you can create these uh, tags, these custom web custom elements, you know, using version one and how you do in version two. And, you know, I, I also experiment by nesting them, you know, in order to make sure that they actually, you know, they're going to be able to work, etc. So, I don't know if there's any anything else to show you about this experiment. Uh, I do have a unit test. I was a star, I was thinking in the beginning to do it like kind of like test driving development, but I basically say screw it. This is an experiment. I don't need to make it a proper, you know. And pretty much the unit test doesn't really do anything, but I can I, I wanted to show you anyways. Uh, for some reason this site decided to disconnect and i'm going to refresh in that way i can force it to actually show me what i want but uh, what else eh, i don't have too much to basically to share with you a part of this uh, like always uh, thank you for watching uh, i appreciate if you managed to get us this far uh, and please, uh, you're more than welcome to provide me feedback, you know, positive is possible, <laughs> you know, uh, ideas. Uh, I really think that in order to prevent intelligent inbreeding, if you don't know what is that, search it, check it out. Uh, it's, a it's very good to be able to see the feedback of other people, you know, who have different approaches, different backgrounds is 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 very useful you know uh, okay so here and back as you can see this is a typical unit test you know using mocha and i i did i was trying to use glove and very basically with the glove i search for all the files that are like specs you know gs and pretty much because here i used to have a lot of testings you know but then i removed them i didn't need them and what it does is that it check one at a time and then it runs the test and give you a feedback and i will basically try to execute this in the beginning before the consumer before the everything was loaded but i decided to go against it in this time and well that's all uh, thank you very much you know and leave your comment have a nice day